So in today's video, we're looking at another example of solubility equilibrium problem solving. The problem has two parts. The first part is a straightforward, um, typical equilibrium problem that's found in both regular and AP chemistry classes in this, in this unit. But the second part of the question is really only done in the AP class. So if you're looking at this as a re for regular grade 12 chemistry, then just focus on the first part of the question. So a student has mixed 100 milliliters of 0.01 molar silver nitrate with 50 milliliters of 0.05 molar sodium chromate, and we're given the chemical formulas of those two substances. Um, we're given also the KSP value for silver chromate. It's very small, 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12. And the first part of the question says, will a precipitate form? So let's just think about this for a minute. If you're mixing silver nitrate which is highly soluble, right? It's 0.01 molar solution. It's got nitrate in its formula. It's a soluble salt. With sodium chromate, which is also highly soluble, it's an alkali metal salt. It's a solution of 0.05 molar. A grade 11 student would look at that and say, well, it looks like a double replacement reaction would happen if you mix those. Of the two products, one of them would be sodium nitrate, but sodium nitrate, by our rules for solubility, is highly soluble. It's got an alkali metal, sodium, and it has nitrate in it. So sodium nitrate, when we mix these solutions, will be floating around in the water, essentially as spectator ions. But then you also have the possibility of forming silver chromate. And silver chromate, by our solubility rules, or by the fact that it has a tiny KSP, is only slightly soluble. So when we mix these two things together, it's quite possible that silver chromate will precipitate. But if the concentrations of the two ions, silver and chromate, are low enough, then it's possible that when we mix the solutions, it won't be saturated, and in fact, there wouldn't be a precipitate. So the first part of the question, will a precipitate form, is really asking, will silver chromate precipitate? The clue in the question that the KSP is given lets me know what we're focusing on, silver chromate. So what we want to do in this part A of the problem is we want to calculate QSP, the reaction quotient, for silver chromate in this potential mixed solution. And we're going to compare QSP to the KSP. If QSP is bigger than KSP, yes, there will be a precipitate. So to calculate the reaction quotient, we need to calculate the concentration of the silver ion and the concentration of the chromate ion in the mixed solution. Now in this problem, we're mixing two solutions together, so that means the dilution is going to happen. The formula for dilution is C1V1 equals C2V2. The concentration after you've diluted, the C2, is C1V1 divided by V2, where the V2 is the total volume in the mixture of the solutions. So for silver, its original concentration, C1, was 0.01 mole. Right? Silver nitrate has only one silver in its formula, so a 0.01 molar silver nitrate has 0.01 molar silver. So for C1, 0.0100 molar, we used 100 milliliters of that solution. And when we've mixed the two solutions together, V2 will be 150 milliliters total. So the concentration of the silver after we've mixed them will be 0.01 times 100 over 150 is 0 0.00, and I'm going to keep three significant digits, 00667 molarity. So that's a pretty small concentration. Let's see what the chromate is. Its original concentration, looking up here, um, 0.05 molar sodium chromate. The sodium, there's two of them in this formula, so sodium's concentration, if we were interested, would be twice this number, but there's only one chromate in the formula, so the chromate's initial concentration is the same as this number, 0 0.0500 molar. Its volume was 50 milliliters, and again, the mixture, the total volume is 150 milliliters, so 0.05 times 50 divided by 150 is 0.0167, keeping three significant digits, molarity. So now we've got the two 
ion concentration. So they're both, well, you know, 0.0167 is not that small. So when we mix these two things, it's looking likely that there will be a precipitate, but let's actually find out. So we're going to calculate QSP. Q is just the reaction quotient. Now, what we to get the QSP expression, it's the same as the KSP expression. You remember that the KSP expression is based on the equation silver chromate solid ionizes into two silver ions and a chromate ion, and the ions are aqueous. So the expression for Q is just the equilibrium expression for that reaction. So it's going to equal the concentration of silver squared times the concentration of chromate. So to get QSP, we take the silver's concentration, 0 0.00667 squared times the chromate concentration, 0 0.0167. Remember that SP simply means solubility product. It's the subscript that we put with the equilibrium constants in the solubility unit. 0 0.00667 squared times 0 0.0167 gives me a pretty small number, 7.43 times 10 to the minus 7. However, we look up at the KSP value, the equilibrium constant for this reaction, it was 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12. So even though this QSP is very small, it's much larger than the KSP above. So we'll say since the QSP is bigger than the KSP, it tells me that the solution is super saturated. So it means a precipitate, a precipitate will form. The other two possible results, if QSP had actually been equal to the KSP, then we would say that the solution is perfectly saturated highly unlikely that that would happen, but it's possible. And so if it were saturated, again, there would be no precipitate forming um, in that situation because it's just perfectly saturated. If Q were less than KSP, then normally in an equilibrium unit, that would tell me that the reaction shifts forwards to reach equilibrium. However, in this case, there is no silver chromate in the solution, so we simply say that the solution is not yet saturated and there would be no precipitate forming. When Q is bigger than K, the equilibrium shifts backwards, and that's forming solid silver chromate. So when Q is bigger than K, yes, we get a precipitate forming. So that's a typical question from grade 12 regular chemistry as well as the AP chemistry class. However, part B goes a step further. Now that we know a precipitate forms, and let's assume it reaches a new solubility equilibrium, what will be the concentrations of each of the ions in the resulting solution? Okay, So what are the concentrations of all four ions? There are sodium ions, there's nitrate ions, there's silver, and there's chromate. Why don't we take care of the easier ones first, the sodium and the nitrate, because those are spectator ions. They're not going to be involved in this precipitation. So the spectator ions concentration of sodium and the concentration of nitrate. Now the sodium concentration came from sodium chromate and we notice there's two sodiums for every chromate so in the diluted solution the sodium's concentration will simply be twice the chromate's concentration. So the chromate was 0 0.0167 so the sodium will be twice 0 0.0167 in this diluted solution. So 2 times 0 0.0167 is 0 0.0333 or 0 0.0334 molarity. Okay? It's a spectator ion. Its concentration is simply the result of the dilution. The sodium, the nitrate's concentration came from silver nitrate, and there's one nitrate for every one silver. So the nitrate's concentration will simply be the same as the silver's concentration after diluting. So it's going to equal 0 0.00667 molarity. Okay, so the spectators are relatively easy to deal with. It's the silver and the chromate that are a bit more complicated because although we know what their concentrations were immediately after we mixed the solutions, we've just said that a precipitate will form. So as the precipitate forms, the equilibrium shifts backwards, 
both the silver and the chromate concentration will drop. So their final concentrations may not be the same as the original concentrations here after dilution. So we've got to figure out what happens to silver and to chromate. So to do that, let's write out the um, equation for the precipitation. So in the precipitation, it's just the reverse of the solubility equation. So two silver ions react with chromate, and they form silver chromate. Whoops, Ag2CrO4. This is a precipitation reaction. Now it's the reverse of the solubility equation. So because it's the reverse, its equilibrium constant, let's just call it K, will be the reciprocal of the KSP value. Right? When you reverse an equation, you take the reciprocal of its equilibrium constant. So 1.1 divided by 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12 is a huge number. It's 9.1 times 10 to the positive 11. So this is huge. Now, why is it important to consider that it's a huge equilibrium constant? It means that the reaction in terms of precipitation will essentially go to completion. Of course, it won't, won't realistically, technically be complete. It's going to reach an equilibrium. However, it's going to essentially be complete. So if we put the silver's concentration from above on my initial line of an ice table, 0 0.00667, and the chromate was 0 0.0167 molarity, this guy's a solid. We don't, we're not interested in terms of the ice table. And now we can say, because it is essentially a complete reaction, one of these two things will get used up essentially completely. Looking at the stoichiometry, a 2 to 1 ratio, it appears that this guy will get used up completely, 0 0.00667. This guy will end up losing half as much of this in a 2 to 1 ratio. So 1 half of 0 0.00667. So the silver's concentration appears to go to zero. Now, of course, it can't be zero. It's going to reach an equilibrium. So that's going to be the one that challenges us. It's, according to this ice table, it's reaching zero concentration. But it can't be zero. It's got to be some very small number, and we're going to have to figure that out. But the chromate's concentration is now more easy to find, 0 0.0167 minus half of 0 0.00667 gives me 0.0134 molarity. All right, so there's the chromate's concentration. Now, what about that silver? It's not zero. It's very, very, very small. It's going to be, this reaction is almost complete. So it goes to almost zero, but it can't really go to zero. So how do we figure out what it will be? To do that, we're going to pretend that this reaction, which we've just assumed, went to completion, so it's precipitated completely. We're going to now say that some of that salt, silver chromate, redissolves. So imagine that we're, we're pretending that the precipitation completely happens, so all the silver precipitates, but then some of that silver chromate redissolves and creates a tiny bit more silver. Okay, so the silver won't really be zero. Now, as the silver chromate dissolves again, it's dissolving into a solution that has 0 0.0134 molar chromate. So essentially, we're going to now do a common ion effect question. So we take the silver chromate that we just said precipitates, and we pretend, or we imagine, that some of that precipitate redissolves. Okay, so as it redissolves, this is the reverse of the precipitation reaction, and this is our KSP expression, so the K, KSP equation. So the KSP is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12. And now the silver, we said, had gone to zero concentration. The chromate, we had said, would be 0 0.0134 molarity. All right. So now, as the silver chromate solid, the, the precipitate starts to, to dissolve, the silver concentration will increase. We'll say it goes up by 2s, and the chromate will increase by half as much. So the chromate concentration will end up being a little bit bigger than this. However, s is going to be so small that, in effect, this will be the concentration of chromate. You'll see that in just a moment. So at equilibrium, we have 2s for silver, 
and 0 0.0134 plus S for chromate. And now we can simply do a KSP a common ion effect question. The KSP 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12 equals the silver's concentration 2S squared times the chromate concentration 0 0.0134 plus S. Now, if you have a solver on your graphing calculator, you can solve that with the solver, or we can use the approximation technique for those of us with just graphing with us, the scientific calculators. We can say, since the KSP is small, we can assume that S, this S, is much less than 0 0.0134 molarity. And that's sort of what I hinted at earlier, that because it's so much less, it really won't change the chromate's concentration. So what that does is it means 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12 is approximately equal to 4s squared, 2s squared, times 0 0.0134. We can ignore the plus s because it's so much smaller than 0 0.0134. This equation is very easy to solve. We take the KSP, 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12. We divide by 0 0.0134. We divide by 4, and we get an answer. This answer is S squared, so now we square root that, and we get that S is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity. Okay? Now, in a normal equilibrium unit, when we use the approximation technique, we would check the approximation. We would call this S1 and we'd go find S2. But when we look at this, this approximation, assuming that S is much less than 0 0.0134, this answer is so much obviously less than 0 0.0134, I'm not going to bother checking it. That is the correct answer. So now we can say, therefore, the silver concentration will be 2S looking up at my ice table, 2s, so it's going to be twice this, and we get 9.06 times 10 to the, well, I guess 9.0, if I'm calling these sig figs, double that, 9.0 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity. The chromate concentration, I hinted earlier that it wouldn't change, and it's, it, you can see here it's 0 0.0134 plus S, and when we add that S, it really doesn't affect it. It's 0 0.0134 molarity. Okay? So in fact, the silver's concentration, which we originally thought had gone to zero, it doesn't. It, in fact, reaches this tiny, tiny number, 9.0 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity. All right? So there's a way to get at the silver's concentration, which and this would be so small, we ended up doing it in two steps. We assumed the reaction would completely precipitate in one ice table, and then we assumed that that precipitate redissolves a little bit, and as it redissolves, we can calculate the concentration of the silver, which appeared to go to zero, and in fact didn't. All right? So there's a more advanced problem for AP chemistry, the part B. Um, part A of this question would be one that could be found both on an AP uh, exam as well as on a grade 12 regular chemistry exam.